Good evening. It's Tuesday, August 6, 2019 here in Cebu City. I'm Sherry Ann Lim and here's all you need to know in Newsbits tonight. The National Bureau of Investigation in Central Visayas wants the Chinese police to investigate the operation of a Chinese sex trafficking group in Cebu. Here's Nico Tubo for the details. The National Bureau of Investigation in Central Visayas wants the Chinese police to conduct their own investigation on the operation of a sex trafficking group in Cebu where both the alleged perpetrators and victims are Chinese nationals. The NBI uncovered the operations in a bar at the Tourist Garden Hotel in Sitio Ibabao, Barangay Agus, Lapu-Lapu City, which led to the rescue of 34 Chinese women. The hotel reportedly operates exclusively for Chinese patrons. NBI Central Visayas Director Thomas Enrili said an entrapment operation was conducted against Zheng Dan, Kuan Yi Queen, Shi Zhu Wei, and Shi Shun Wei inside the premises of Royal One KTV located within the compound of the hotel. The victims aged 20 to 30 came from different provinces in China and entered the Philippines with a tourist visa but ended up as high-class prostitutes. Based on NBI's investigation, the women catered solely to Chinese patrons traveling and working in the country. Enrili said they are coordinating with a consul to ask their Chinese counterparts to conduct an investigation. The rescued women were already released to the care and custody of the Chinese consulate. Meanwhile, Lapu-Lapu City Mayor Junard Ahong Chan said there is no reason for the city to shut down the Tourist Garden Hotel since it is operating legally with necessary permits. Nico Tubo, News Bits Tonight. Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio has accepted the proposal of the Cebu Provincial Government for the province to enter into a sisterhood agreement with Davao City. Here's Sheila Gavinas for the details. Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio has accepted the proposal letter of Governor Gwen Garcia expressing the Cebu Provincial Government's intent to enter into a sisterhood agreement with Davao City. The letter was handed during the 450th founding anniversary celebration of Cebu Province. Duterte Carpi said the sisterhood ties with Cebu will enable them to copy programs of the province. The mayor said Davao City and Cebu Province can share some programs on peace and order, integrated gender and development program, disaster risk reduction preparedness and response, and agricultural programs. Duterte Carpi said that along with Cebu, they also aim to develop Davao City to be at the top among other cities in the country. Among the activities during the celebration of the founding anniversary Tuesday were the ceremonial tree planting and the formal launching of the Tabo sa Capitolio. Sheila Gravines, Newsbits tonight. The camp of Mandawe City Mayor Jonas Cortez has denied allegations that he owns the cockpit raided by authorities yesterday. However, the mayor's chief of staff admitted that the cockpit is owned by the mayor's siblings. Here's Nico Tubo for the details. The camp of Mandawi City Mayor Jonas Cortez denied allegations that he owns the cockpit raided by members of the Criminal Investigation and Detection Group Centra Visayas yesterday. However, Attorney Jamal Kalipayan, the Chief of Staff of Cortez, admitted that the cockpit is owned by the siblings of the mayor. Kalipayan said the cockpit D and C Coliseum, located in Barangay Estancia, Ibaba, Mandawi City, was originally owned by the mother of the mayor. Cortez then became a co-owner via inheritance after his mother died. Kalipayan said Cortez had to divest from it since he was the mayor of Mandawi City that time. The cockpit was raided yesterday afternoon and authorities caught at least 370 persons for violation of Presidential Decree 449. CIDG Central Visayas Chief Edwin Lacostales said Presidential Decree 449 only allows cockfighting on Sundays, special holidays, and fiestas but not for more than three days. The arrested persons were brought to the office of CIDG Central Visayas inside the headquarters of the Cebu City Police Office. Meanwhile, the management of DNC Coliseum provided food for the detainees. The Mandawi City government is also planning to provide portalets as majority of the detainees are constituents of the city. 
Nico Tubo, News Bits Tonight. More stories in News Bits Tonight after the short break. Some affected tenants of Juanita Building are seeking assistance from the building's management after a portion of the edifice collapsed yesterday. Here's Nico Tubo for the details. Some tenants of Juanita Building on Gorordo Avenue in Cebu City have expressed their interest to talk to the building owner to seek assistance. This developed after a portion of the building which was occupied before by the social security system in Barangay Kamput House, Cebu City, collapsed Monday dawn. Lloyd Suiko, owner of a travel agency that has been occupying Juanita Building since 2011, is hoping to meet the owner to discuss possible assistance the management can offer. Suiko said any kind of assistance will do, but for now, he said they are already looking for other areas where they can continue their operation. Meanwhile, a bank employee who asked not to be named is also hoping that they could retrieve the documents affected by the incident. The staff of the bank were already transferred to other branches as their operations were temporarily halted. The soil in the area where a high-rise condominium is being constructed loosened Monday dawn. As a result, a portion of Juanita building collapsed. The incident was initially blamed on the excavation work for the foundation of a planned 26-floor edifice being developed by Vista Residences Incorporated. Cebu City Office of the Building Official Chief Florante Catalan said their initial investigation revealed that the soil in the area loosened due to continuous rains the past few days. Catalan said the retaining wall built by the contractor failed to prevent the Juanita building from collapsing. Obo has already issued a cease and desist order against the contractor, suspending all its construction works. Catalan said the contractor will not be allowed to operate again if it fails to address the collapsed part of Juanita building. Nico Tubo, News Bits Tonight. Here's the latest in sports with Kenneth Torres. The Philippine Sports Commission has chosen Lapu-Lapu City as host of this year's Asia-Pacific Karate Championship, which will be held at the Hoops Dome in September. More than 500 karatikas from different parts of the Asia-Pacific region will participate in the event. Lapu-Lapu City Mayor Junard Chan said it was PSC Commissioner Ramon Fernandez who informed him during a meeting last Monday that his city will be the host of the annual event. During the meeting, Fernandez promised that the PSC will grant financial assistance by donating sports equipment and providing competent coaches. It was also said that Chan will give his support to the PSC, adding he will make available the city's sports facilities for the events. The upcoming event will be a joint pledge by the city, Karate Federation, and the Department of Tourism. Kenneth Torres, Newspits Tonight. To get the latest, visit www.sunstar.com.ph. Follow us on our YouTube channel and official social media accounts on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Cherry Ann Lim. Good evening.